Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk a little bit more about this browser isolation I had mentioned in a previous video. I got an email about it, and so somebody said, hey, can you talk about this a little bit more? And uh, to me, this always just seemed obvious, but apparently it's not. It's a surprise to some of you, so we'll talk about it. Of course, earlier this week, we did a video on the top five privacy-focused browsers, and I'm not saying that you should use one of those exclusively or that you should use only one browser and get rid of everything else. That's not really the importance that what we want to do. What we want to do when we're talking about using different browsers for different purposes is to isolate your different tasks. This carries with it a lot of benefit. The first major benefit is even if you have a browser that does fingerprint tracking uh, or fingerprint prevention, um, which in and of itself, if you're unfamiliar with what fingerprint tracking is, what they're doing is they're looking at various elements of your site. What is your screen resolution? Uh, what is your, uh, you know, what type of uh, system do you use? What are the various uh, extensions and plugins and such like that that you have installed? And so all of these things can be used to say, well, we can't say for sure this is this person is this person, but if all the fingerprinting matches, at least we have said it's a possibility that these two user sessions are the case. So if you are using different browsers, even if the fingerprint tracking prevention fails, you can still look like a completely different person because in one case you're using uh, Firefox, the other place you're using Chromium. Now this carries with it another major benefit and that if you remember the Linus Tech Tips hack and um, uh, Matthew Moore's channel was hacked using a similar thread and this is a common hack we're seeing where session cookies are being stolen. Why? Well, because if you're using multi-factor authentication, the session cookie always logs you in so it's a way of getting access to the data without having to worry about bypassing MFA because the browser has already stored the MFA exception. So if you're using different browsers, then only the things logged in on the browser that was stolen is going to be uh, subject to problems. This is why I don't log into anything on the default browser on my system. So if I accidentally click a link or land on something that steals the browser extensions because I'm doing some basic thing on the internet, all of my data, my login accounts are not compromised. You don't have a compromise on your 2FA or your MFA. You don't have compromises on the various other elements going on. What ends up happening is you have one browser for your general internet browsing. You have one browser logged into, say, YouTube and or Google services. You might have another one for, I don't know, Netflix. What are people signing into these days? Uh, various elements. And so what I do to keep things separate is you use a variety of different browsers. So on my one PC, I will have one browser. I use Brave browser for YouTube usually. Uh, well, for my primary YouTube, and then I use Vivaldi for my secondary YouTube. I use Firefox as the basic default, and then I'll use LibreWolf for some generic uh, uh, searching around the internet utilizing different protocols. And so what happens is I'll have a variety of different browsers that are used for a variety of different purposes. So I am never an advocate of saying I use this browser. It's I use this browser for this, this browser for this, this browser for this. If you go to my video production computer, Okay, I will stream from the Chromium browser, which is what's logged into YouTube, but the default browser is set to this super hardened Firefox. So the cookies are cleared after each session, no data is being stored, everything is cleared, no history, nothing happens on Firefox, the default browser. But if you look and watch the weekly news roundup, I'm going through all of the articles on Firefox. If there's anything shenanigan-y going in there that happens to try and steal session cookies, the YouTube channel is protected. The Firefox account has nothing in it. And so you use different browsers for different purposes. Also installed on that same streaming computer, so Chromium, is the default Google logged in browser so I don't have to log in every single time on that particular setting where I'll have the YouTube account, but nothing gets done that's not related to the YouTube account on that browser. 
Firefox is used as your basic get on the internet, do your basic things, show the articles. Pretty much any video you see on the channel where I'm pulling up an article or something to show on the screen, that's all being done on Firefox. Then if I need some extra protection or a separate browser, I have LibreWolf installed over there, which also, like Firefox, allows you to break out of um, your, or clear all the caches and things. The other purpose I often use LibreWolf on is, as you know, my network is hardened with a lot of tracker blockers. I block all advertisements on my router level and things by utilizing a custom host file built into my router. Similar thing would happen with a Raspberry Pi running Pi-hole or some other, maybe a no-track setup install that you have on your system. These are all good functions that we have. And the problem you have is sometimes when we're working with clients that need me to do something with Google Analytics or Facebook or something like that. And because of that, I might need to break out of the firewall I have on my router. And so what I do is LibreWolf, I will turn on DNS over HTTPS, which allows me to break out of the firewall and allows me to access those resources that are otherwise banned on my network with that one isolated browser and every other browser is safe from being tracked by Google Analytics, being tracked by TikTok, being tracked by, by uh, Facebook and all these. And so I have different browsers set up for different purposes. One of them to bust out of my firewall, one of them as just general protection default browser that's extra hardened, clears things out, no session cookies to steal. One of them may stay logged into some services and resources that I need, but it ends up producing a system where I'm much harder to track because I look like a variety of different people on the same system because of the different browsers you're using. And so this is really what the interplay is. You use a variety of different web browsers for a variety of different tasks. A, it protects you from cookie se uh, session theft. B, it protects you from uh, some degree of fingerprinting and see it just gives you a separate platform to isolate work on different channels and then of course D in my case it allows me to bust out of my local firewall which prevents all the advertising and all of the the tracking from social media sites and things like that so we've really done a good job of isolating everything based on that one feature simply by isolating and using different browsers for different tasks and different purposes. So that's what I was getting at in that video. And I think that was the Thorium browser video, if you want to go and have a look at that, or the uh, top five best privacy browsers for the current era, you can have a look at that uh, video on the channel as well. With that, thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.